visual impairment, persons with visual impairment, and negotiating the streets and that physical barriers to independent mobility, as outlined in Article 10 of the UNCRPD. Sorry, Article 20, and we'll get back to that later. Um, from that exercise, a report was compiled and sent to the relevant municipal corporations. However, today, very little, if any, uh, action was taken to rectify to ra rectify. <laughs> rectify. <laughs> and no, I'm not nervous, Candice. I just get a little tired for the word. <laughs> to rectify those barriers, those barriers that were identified. Pavi in 2015 also carried out a People First Language workshop, which is the language that is encouraged by the UN Convention and is internationally accepted. So earlier this afternoon when I heard the gentleman talk about the journalist who was about to use the wrong language, I thought if she had attended the seminar, because it was specifically designed, for communication persons in the media so that they will use the correct language when reporting on and interviewing persons with disabilities, she would have known what to say. To see. And, in June 2015, uh, sorry, that would have been, no, um, you have June 2015 and not December. Honey. In December 2015, that would have been around the same time as the symposium, we also worked with the U.S. Embassy and compiled a calendar which would have also emphasized people first language and that was distributed to our donors as well as corporate sponsors so that they as well will have access to and learn the accurate language. And this morning I was listening to a lot of the presenters and I wrote a note to someone saying, oh my God, I've never been insulted so much in one short period of time. The amount of times the word disabled people, I tell people, I always tell people, anytime the word disabled go to come out your mouth, think of another way to say it, that that word should not be used. So again, persons with disabilities would have been, of course, the acceptable terminology for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm being told one minute, but they don't realize they need to make special accommodations. <laughs> <laughs> it's called inclusion. <laughs> We will be developing a committee that will be working on the monitoring and the advancement of the UNCRPD and their main aspects of that will be accessibility, Article 9 and Article 20, personal mobility. And why that will be their main focus because of course um, due to blindness that will the link uh, this morning when the when Ria Davison, Mohammed Davison was talking, you saw how the articles were interrelated and interdependent on each other. So while they are talking access, they're going to also be looking at access to transport, access to information, access to education, access to justice. While they're talking personal mobility, you're going to be looking at uh, uh, you will be looking at access but you will also be looking at uh, participation in culture, sports and recreation, as well as things like equality of opportunity and so forth. So again, a nice closing statement is we now see how every part of this symposium and everything we talk about so far link and correlate to each other. Thank you. Thank you for another great presentation. And our next presenter, who I'd like to introduce, is Ian Danulau of the Deaf Empowerment and Advancement Foundation. And let's just get the.
think we have a slide for him. So. organizations the Development and Advancement Foundation, We Care Deaf Support Network, the Tremendous Bigo Association for the <coughs> Hearing Impaired, <laughs> uh, and I teach um, on the Caribbean Sign Language Program at UE. And I want to focus on the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons of, with Disabilities, and in particular on issues of deaf culture and deaf language. So what is deaf language? Deaf language is sign language. Here in Trinidad it's TTSL and ASL, Trinidad Tobago Sign Language and American Sign Language. And also some people make up their own signs at home. And you know some people think, well deaf's not a nice word, we need to use words like hearing impaired, or people use deaf and dumb, or mute, or all kinds of words like that. People have different experiences. Sometimes people are born hearing and then they lose their hearing later in life. But for me, I was born deaf. I, I'm not impaired, I'm not missing anything. I, I am what I always was. So I'm just the same as other people with disability. Sign language is really important for communication. <coughs> there are various deaf groups around the world. We have various events, sporting events, all kinds of different things. Uh, we have events called coders, that means people um, who have deaf parents, hearing children with deaf parents. And we have deaf culture. Deaf culture is a uh, uh, we have our own natural gestures and way of presenting ourselves. Uh, we tend to ask lots of questions. We tend to enjoy lining until late into the night. There are various kind of ways in which deaf people behave that make up deaf culture. And equality for us is extremely important. Equality in education. In the past, Deaf children would go to primary school and then that would be it. Hearing children, on the other hand, they leave primary school, they go to secondary school, they go to university, whereas deaf children, that never used to happen. A few years ago now, um, they started mainstreaming deaf children. But with that too, there have been lots of problems because of uh, limitations with interpreters. Sometimes there's a real problem with communicating with their children. Uh, with jobs, we need equality as well. Lots and lots of deaf people work in grocery stores, packing bags. Very few people have office jobs or other kinds of jobs. Almost everyone's working in grocery stores. And there it's clear that there's no equality. Uh, people tell deaf people that that's all they're capable of doing, packing bags, packing them, packing shelves maybe. You know, that's easy, deaf people can do that. We don't have to communicate with them. We don't have a communication problem if we do that. That's not equality. Now, we like to say deaf people can do. They can do anything. In the past, we've been so used to people telling us deaf people can't. That hearing people are perfect, but deaf people are broken. <laughs> you know, we have that symbol with a, an ear, with a, with a line through it. That's how we're seen sometimes, just that, a broken ear. That we can't do things, so we focus on what, what is wrong. It's not even true that deaf people can't speak. 
lots of deaf people can speak. And some people uh, practice their speech a lot and get good at that. Other people don't use their speech so much. But it's not true that deaf people can't speak. There's a lot of variation. People are different. Some people, for example, are born with hearing and lose their hearing later on. Uh, some people are hard of hearing. Um, but for lots of people, sign language is really, really important for communication. We need to be independent. Um, we've had in the past a situation where parents think that their children can't be independent, they'd better stay home, they can't get married, they can't go out late, they worry about them, they say, don't stay out late, don't, you could have come home. But deaf people are fed up with that. We've had enough of that. How do you think we feel inside? We see our brothers and sisters living independent lives, going outside, and we feel frustrated being told, no, 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 you can't, you can't, they can, but you can't. Deaf people can go away. I've been away to England and to Australia and to Turkey. Deaf people can do all of those things. They can go on vacations just like other people, but in Trinidad and Tobago sometimes, in the Caribbean, it's hard for deaf people because people think that uh, they have to be led around. That they can't go out on their own, they not able on their own. And people need positive experiences in order to develop and in order to be independent. Otherwise they feel like they're in jail, they're in a cage, they're stuck at home. In the past, um, I was doing research on languages with Yui. And we met someone who had been to school, uh, left school at seven, 18, I think. I've never been to school. And uh, they stayed home the whole time. And they were led around by their parents as a child. And they continued to be like that. This is a grown person. They'll live their whole lives like that way, like that, like a child. In the future, if I had a deaf or a hard of hearing child, or a child with disabilities, it's important to encourage them to be independent and let them go. Independence is really important. People can't live in a cage, can't live in jail. They have to be independent.